At this point, the Kantian idea of world republic and perpetual peace is suggestive. This has been read as a conservative pacifist manifesto, but it is much more radical. I observed that Kantian moral law leads to his economic plan to supersede capitalism. On top of that, Kantian moral law, when applied to the political level, will lead to the federation of nations to supersede the state. Hence, Kant's perpetual peace, uh, perpetual peace means not just peace, but also superseding the capital and the state. Therefore, we can say that Kant is proposing here nothing other than a gradual simultaneous world revolution to abolish both state and capital. Compared with Proudhon, Kant see the state in terms of its relation with the other states. Thus, the superseding of the state is not conceivable on the basis of one nation, but only uh, on the international basis, that is, in the Federation of Nations. Kant published a treatise on perpetual peace in 1795, just when Napoleon was about to rise in the course of the French Revolution. It may be said that Kant was anticipating a new type of war among nation states, which were fervently admired by romantic philosophers such as Fichte and Hegel. The Kantian idea had been ignored throughout the 19th century, but it gained respect after the First World War and the League of Nations was formed uh, in accordance with his notion of perpetual peace. The, the League of Nations were ineffective, uh, however, mainly because it was not ratified by the United States. This could not prevent the Second World War. The United Nations, which was formed following the Second World War, was also not very powerful. It has been often criticized for becoming the mechanism for hegemonic nations to legitimate uh, their purposes. And it, it is even looked down on for having to rely on hegemonic nations' military forces. The idea of sol solving international conflicts through the United Nations is often denounced as Kantian idealism. Such criticism of the United Nations can be traced back to Hegel, who mockingly criticized Kant's the design of a federation of nations. And this criticism has been repeated over and over again ever since. In Hegel's view, federation won't work without a superpower that can punish the nations that violate the law. In other words, there can be no peace without a hegemonic state. For Hegel, world history is nothing but a stage on which nation states compete with one another. The world historical idea is realized by a hegemonic state. The problem is, however, that such a state may well seek its own interest. Thus, the world historical idea is actualized through a subjective will or desire, as was the case with Napoleon. Hegel called this the cunning of reason. Following Hegel, Marxists have ridiculed Kantian cosmopolitanism. Today, this line is repeated by neoconservative ideologues in the United States, and incidentally, it's not surprising to learn that many of them used to be Trotskyite. After 9-11, those people attacked Europe for siding with the United Nations, dismissing it as old Kantian idealism. However, uh, these people remain un unaware that they themselves were based on old Hegelian idealism. 